And the title of my message is The Joys of Palm Sunday. Have you ever stopped to think about whether you have joy in your heart? One of the joys, one of the nine fruits is, the, is joy. So when you have the Holy Spirit flowing through you, you should have joy in your heart, no matter what. It's easy to say that you have joy, but do you really have joy? Are you yielding to the Holy Spirit, that fruit of joy? Today is Palm Sunday, and the Lord wants you to examine your heart to see if you have joy working within you. The people were full of joy as they waved their palm branches as Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey that had never been ridden before. Imagine what that day was like for so many people during that time. They thought Jesus was going to set up his kingdom here on earth. And they were going to be delivered from the Roman Empire. They had great joy. But that is not why Jesus came. He came for something greater. He came to deliver the people from their sins so they could have everlasting life. So many of them their joy was real. They were crying out, Hosanna, blessed be the king. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. There was excitement in the air. Throughout the city of Jerusalem, and there was great joy for that moment. But what happened to all that joy a few days later when Jesus was arrested? Where were the people crying out with great joy when Jesus was on trial? The voices of the accusers and the naysayers were louder than the voices of the people who loved and believed that Jesus was the Messiah. How loud is your voice when it comes to defending Jesus? It's amazing how some people can change so quickly when things don't go their way. Are you this type of person? Do you change as popular opinion comes your way? Or do you stand up for truth no matter what is said and done? We need to always keep the joy of Palm Sunday in our hearts throughout the rest of our journey and never forget that Jesus is our king and he rules the throne of our heart. Figuratively, figuratively speaking, do you wave palm branches of joy every day in your heart? Or just when things go your way? Do you really have joy in your heart? Or do you pretend that you're full of joy around your friends? your brothers and sisters in Christ. But at home, you just mope around and act a different way. You know if you the, have the real deal of joy in your heart when you're in the valley of sufferings. The truth is going to come out. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. 
but rejoice in, in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Christ's glory will be revealed. The devil and his demons cannot stop that from happening. The question is, will you be a partaker in Christ's sufferings? No matter what your situation, no matter what your valley is, are you going to be a partaker in Christ's sufferings? The people of that day thought Jesus was the answer to the problems. And he was, but they looked at Jesus through human eyes and not spiritual eyes. If Jesus was really the Son of God, the Messiah, why would he let them get away with treating him with such disrespect? Why would he let them spit upon him and beat him almost to death? Why would he let them nail him to the cross if he was the Messiah? People today have that same type of attitude, that same type of spirit when things don't go their way. Why would Jesus let this happen to me? If he really loves me, why am I suffering right now? When you're in a valley, valley of suffering, remember that Jesus is with you. And even though you may not be feeling like rejoicing, pick up your palm branch and rejoice and praise the Lord with a heart full of joy. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave to give us what we need. And when we keep that joy flowing in our hearts during difficult times, that joy will give us strength to be an overcomer. Becoming a Christian doesn't mean your life is going to instantly become easy. But it does mean that you're instantly going to have that power to be a Jesus overcomer. When, it's, when you have hardships in your life, you can hold on to the promises of God. Jesus had the victory when he rode, rode that donkey into Jerusalem even though he knew that in a few days, the world was going to think that he was a failure. Jesus kept the will of his Father and fulfilled every prophecy that was written. And there's still some more prophecies that Jesus is going to fulfill. The prophecy of returning for his bride has not yet happened. Thousands of years have passed, and many people have lost sight of this prophecy. What about you? Are you ready for Jesus to come? If Jesus made sure that even the problem riding on a colt that had never been ridden before he made sure that that happened. Don't you think that he's going to make sure the prophecy of him returning to receive his bride is going to happen? Jesus gave instructions to the two disciples in Luke chapter 19, verses 30 and 31, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, Whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do ye lose him? 
Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. What if the two disciples didn't trust the words of Jesus and decided not to do what Jesus told them to do? Would prophecy not be fulfilled? No. Jesus just would have sent someone else to fulfill that prophecy. Jesus told us to watch for him to return. If you don't watch, does it mean that Jesus is not going to come? No. That just means that you won't be ready and you're going to be left behind. Fortunately, the two disciples that Jesus instructed did obey and got that cult. It took faith for the disciples to go and actually get that cult, take them from a stranger's property, and expect that stranger to be okay with them taking his cult. That cult was marked for the master from the time it was born. And we are marked from the time that we are born. But unfortunately, some people don't answer the call to serve Jesus. And they don't listen. Are you one of those people? They don't want to always listen to Jesus. That cult had a special calling. He was directed to, to be used by the Lord. You also have a special calling. And you must stay yielded to the Lord so you can be directed by him. If you don't keep the fruit of joy in your heart, you will lose your strength to go on, and the devil will use that opportunity to cause you to go astray. The colt was loose from his post. He was untied. And all of a sudden, he had to be guided by the disciples to Jesus. That colt could have resisted, ran off, and did his own thing and not yielded. We all play an important role in life's journey for the Lord. Just like the colt, we need to make sure that we stay yielded and be guided as the Lord wants us to be. Every child is special to Jesus. It doesn't matter how many talents you have. As long as you use them to the best of your capability. The Colt's job was simple. Carry Jesus on his back to that holy city. That was his job. Now keep in mind, this Colt has never been ridden before is not used to having someone ride on its back. But the Bible doesn't say that the colt gave Jesus any trouble. When the Lord calls you to do something, he will give you the need to accomplish whatever you need to accomplish. He will help you in your time of need to come through for the Lord. Even and if you've never even done what the Lord is asking you to do. When I was called to preach, I never did that before. I didn't even know that Bible that well. In fact, you could say I felt like this little donkey trying to carry the gospel on my back. But just like this donkey, I had a willing heart. And when you have a willing heart, God can work through you 
in a great way. The donkey wasn't used to having a weight of a person on his back, but God gave him the strength that he needed to carry Jesus. I hear many times where Christians will say, oh, I can't do that. I can't do this. And they give some weak excuse. Oh, I'm only called to do this. Like, they can't do anything else. That's the only thing they're called to do. There's nothing else they can do. They're called to do this. This was my job. This is what God called me to do. I got news for you. God's called many other people in the Bible to do multiple things on life's journey for them. It's God that made you. He can give you what you need to accomplish his will in your life so that he gets the honor and the glory in your life. When they brought the colt back to Jesus, they laid garments on the colt, and then they put Jesus on top of that. And as Jesus made his way to Jerusalem, the people started spreading their clothes in front of that colt as he was walking. Think about it. Jesus is coming down from the Mount of Olives, making his way into Jerusalem, riding on this donkey that has never been ridden before. People are praising God with loud voices for the all and great mighty works that God has done and they have seen. What a joyful occasion. This must have gotten attention of many people inside and outside of Jerusalem. I'm sure they had to come and see what was going on, but not everybody was happy. For Jesus, the Pharisees, self-interest didn't align with Jesus' fulfilling of prophecy. Isn't that how it is today? People don't want to accept Jesus because their interests don't line up with the living way. If you think about it, before Jesus entered into Jerusalem, he passed through Jericho. And he met Zacchaeus, which was the chief of the, of the publicans. And see, with Zacchaeus, he was rich. But you have to realize, publicans, what they did is they overcharged people on their taxes and basically cheated them out of their money. So some people were not happy when Jesus was going to visit Zacchaeus, a sinner, in his house. They murmured against it. But Zacchaeus had this wonderful conversion, making restitution with the people that he wronged. This is great evidence of his conversion. And Jesus said, this day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save which was lost. And as they heard these things, Jesus added a parable. Because he was nigh unto Jerusalem. And because they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. So what was this parable that Jesus added? Jesus tells about a certain nobleman who was going off to a far country to receive his kingdom. And he calls his 10 servants before he takes off and he delivers, delivers each of them a pound. So they all receive the same amount. Now with parables, you... 
need to think how they apply or are relatable for today. So I want you to think of each pound representing the gospel. We all get the same gospel. You get the gospel, I get the gospel, the guy in the back there gets the gospel. It's all a matter of what are you going to do with that gospel? What are you going to do with the gospel? The gospel in this scenario is representing a pound. And all his servants got a pound. It was up to them what they were going to do with what they were given. But the citizens, not, not as servants, but the citizens, a lot of them hated this man. And they said that they weren't going to have this man reign over him, over them. Not everybody's going to accept the Lord and the gospel. Plain and simple. That's just how it is. Jesus, that happened to Jesus. That has happened probably to a lot of you. I know it's happened to me. Just because people don't accept the gospel, it doesn't change the gospel. It doesn't alter the gospel. The truth is the truth. Some people may not like it, but the Lord is still coming back for his kingdom, just like in this parable. It came to pass that when the Lord did return in this parable, he commanded these servants of his to come to him. And the Lord was going to see what everybody was given and how they prospered. See, we are all given the same gospel. So what are you doing with it? Are you taking advantage of it? When your opportunity comes along, when the Holy Spirit brings a soul across your path, are you ready to tell someone about Jesus? Who knows how many souls you can save? Are you using your abilities that God has given you to tell others about Jesus? In this situation, the man gave each of one of them a pound, and it was up to them what they were going to do with that pound. We all receive the gospel. What are we going to do with it? You can take your Bible, put it up on a shelf, and let it just sit there. Never read it again. Or you can study it, learn more, read about how people were witness to others and how many souls were saved throughout the book of Acts. It's up to you what you're going to do with the gospel. Well, the first person that was given that pound met with the Lord and said, Lord, one pound is now 10 pounds. So the Lord said, good servant, because thou faithful, have thou authority over 10 cities. And then the next servant came up and said, thy pound, now it's five pounds. What was his reward? His reward was five cities. And then another came up and said, Lord, behold, here is thy pound. I kept it laid up in a napkin. Are you like this man? You really don't do much with the gospel. You got saved, but that's it. You come to church once in a while just to feel good. But it doesn't really much go any farther than that. The fact is, if you don't read your Bible, you're not going to grow in the Lord that much. Yeah, you can listen to sermons. But the Holy Spirit wants to work on you and give you thoughts. 
The Lord said to this servant, out of thine own mouth, I will judge thee, thou wicked servant. The Lord took his pound away from him and gave it to the guy who had 10 pounds. Now the people that heard this were surprised. He gave it to the man who already had 10 pounds. Well, this man has already proved himself and shown that he can increase one pound to 10 pounds. Same thing with the gospel. I want to give the guy who has, who has, can excel at spreading the gospel what he needs. Give him that extra pound. See what he can do with it. Does the Lord have an extra pound for you? He wants to give you an extra pound if you're ready to use it. You know, Reverend Angel used to always say, if you want something done, you pick a busy person. It's because the person who is not busy is probably not a hard worker. The men that rejected the Lord, the Lord said, bring them hither to me. And then he said, slay them. There are people who don't want the gospel and they reject Jesus. And it's not going to be good for those people. All this was told to the people right before he was going to enter into Jerusalem. Jesus' point was that he was going to come back and set up his kingdom, but it wasn't going to be right then like the people thought. No. Jesus came to save sinners like Zacchaeus. Less than a week later, the people were going to turn on Jesus and he was going to be crucified because the people thought the kingdom of God should appear right away. They thought Jesus should have taken his rightful throne. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our ways. God's plan of redemption needs to be filled through Jesus Christ. It was not about having Jesus' kingdom immediately appear. It was about lost souls. People were more concerned about their own lives and how the kingdom was going to benefit them. The Pharisees were concerned about losing their power to Jesus. So both sets of people were selfish. They were wrong in their thinking. We're all giving the opportunity to receive the gospel. The question is, what are you going to do with it? People today are more than willing to go the way of the world and not serve Jesus. As Jesus made his way from the Mount of Olives, it was an exciting time for the people to wave their palm branches, lay them down before Jesus. Everything just seemed to be going Jesus' way. But Jesus knew better. Jesus even tried to warn the disciples a chapter earlier in Luke chapter 18, verses 31 through 33. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto the disciples, unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For we shall be delivered, un, excuse me, for he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spit on. 
And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. As the people were praising God and rejoicing for Jesus coming, the Pharisees among the people were not happy. And this is what they said to Jesus. They said, Jesus, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And Jesus answered them and said, I tell you that these should hold their peace. If these should hold their peace, the stones should immediately cry out. So even if all the people there would have been quiet, somehow, some way, the joy would come forth and praise Jesus. It doesn't matter. God's power is greater. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Who's going to think that the stones would cry out? Only God. Jesus was, was fulfilling prophecy. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy kingdom cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fold of an ass. When Jesus came near to the city, he wept. He cried. Jesus had great love for Jerusalem and the people in it. No matter who they were, all of them, that was the love of Jesus. Just because people don't love you doesn't mean you can't love them. There's a lot of people that don't love me. There's a lot of people that probably don't even like me. But that doesn't mean that I can't love them. Jesus knew that the people were coming against them. The chief priests, the scribes, the chief of the people, looked to destroy Jesus. It's sad how much people can influence other people. Jesus was bringing spiritual deliverance for their soul, mind, and body. After he called out the money changers that were in the temple, he said, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Jesus wanted the people to respect God's house and not take advantage of their fellow man. The blind and the lame came to Jesus in the temple and he healed them. That was Jesus' message to the people, healing the soul and the body. Jesus came with love and peace as a humble servant, lowly on a donkey. Shouldn't we have that love, that joy, that peace, and be humble about all of it? Jesus is our example. He wants all of us to be like him. Friend, I'd like to give you this opportunity on Palm Sunday morning to receive Jesus Christ in your heart, to have that love, that joy, that peace of Jesus. Let Jesus come into your heart today. Just pray with me and say, Oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. 
but I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now let's get your miracle for you today. What a wonderful day to receive from the Lord. Whatever your need may be, whatever comment you put your request in for prayer. Maybe you're standing in the gap for a loved one who needs prayer. Well, the Bible says that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm a believer. Reverend Chris Mockham is a believer here on stage. And there's so many believers in this sanctuary that are going to pull down heaven for you. So at this time, I'd like everybody to raise their hands to pull down heaven for each one of those souls along with yourself. Lord, Heavenly Father, just move in a special way in the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let them receive all that you have for them. Break their bondages, set them free in the blood name of Jesus. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let everything come to normal in their body. In the blood name of Jesus, amen. Friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything he is doing in your life. And now those of you that need prayer in this sanctuary, I'd like to encourage you to go to my left and your right to receive prayer. And the rest of you, I'd like to encourage you to come this way to receive more power from on high. Let the Holy Spirit move on you today. Let the Holy Spirit bless you in a great way with whatever your need may be. All you need to do is just be that yielded vessel. And when you're that yielded vessel, God can work for you in a great way. And the Holy Spirit wants to come in to your yielded vessel. Now that you're blood washed, you need to become spirit filled. And by doing that, all you have to do is just say glory and trust in the Holy Spirit to come on in, take over your tongue and speak in a heavenly language. So now at this time, I'm going to call down a great anointing upon you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost as everybody in this sanctuary starts to yield over. Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon the people. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And just start praising them, friend. Glorify in Jesus. Glorify in the King. Lifting up those praises, just you in Jesus, just you in Jesus, yes. Let him bless you, let him bless you. Just open up and trust him, glorify in Jesus, glorifying the King, praise in Jesus, love in Jesus, you in Jesus. to Jesus, glorify in Jesus, praising the Lord, oh, praising Jesus. Praising Him, He is worthy. Glory, glory to Jesus. We thank you, dear and Jesus. The oh, Lord, us the people crucified today. The people today. Lord, Lord, Though they today. led Him on For each that one day in the name of Jesus. to be killed in such a glorifying way. Glorifying the Lord, so glorifying find Jesus. And shameful glorifying Jesus. Men. So praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus.
praise your holy name. Praise your holy name, dear Jesus. Glory, 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 glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Sick with her praise the Lord. Hatred and sin. Shines a light for all to know. He is the light, and still the voice is calling Jesus. He speaks to every heart, entering. Praise Jesus. No hidden from man's sight, they see him shining bright in those who have him. Fair of grace and holy truth, the wedding bells ring loud. The groom is coming soon. Though he died, yet he is the Son of God. Still he lives, who rejected.